Welcome to this video on OSDP wiring considerations which explains best practices to use when installing HRD readers using the OSDP protocol. OSDP protocol interfaces are differential balance lines conforming to RS-485 specifications, which are also known as ANSI, TIA or EIA-485. RS-485 is designed to be a balanced system, which means there are two wires other than ground that are used to transmit the signal. The system is called balanced because the signal on one wire is ideally the exact opposite of the signal on the second wire. In other words, if one wire is transmitting a high, the other wire will be transmitting a low, and vice versa. The RS-485 specification does not specifically explain how an RS-485 network should be wired, but does give some guidelines. OSDP readers should be connected to the controller panel using a daisy chain topology. This means that the cable must go from one device to another in a linear fashion. Star type connections are not allowed. Daisy chain topology with direct connections to readers is recommended. Daisy chain topology using junction boxes is not recommended, but backbones comprising of junction boxes can be made to work if the stub length is kept as short as possible. Let's look at the resultant waveform created by a stub length of 10 feet. The diagram shows a schematic of an example scenario. When we look at the resultant waveforms, we can see what happens in cases of excessively long stub lengths. Long stub lengths cause significant impedance mismatches along with resultant reflections. This leads to significant signal degradation, which is why it is important to keep all stubs as short as possible. For most OSDP wiring installations, HID recommends using Belden 3107A cable or an equivalent. However, other options are available depending on individual installation requirements. Here is a link to the Belden website, but be aware that other cable manufacturers provide cables with similar specifications. There are also dedicated OSDP access control cables such as Remi 725953 composite cable, which contains component cabling for OSDP data, reader power, and door hardware such as the request to exit button, door strike, and contact. This means that only one cable needs to be pulled to each door. The composite cable consists of four component cables, each of which has a different purpose. The component 1 cable is used for power to the reader and the door lock. Component 2 is used for OSDP data. Component 3 for request to exit and auxiliaries. And component 4 for the door contact. References to AWG seen in the previous slides relate to the American standard wire gauge for non-ferrous metals. It is used to indicate the thickness of a wire. The higher the AWG value, the thinner the wire. Typical specifications are shown in this table extract. As the name implies, a twisted pair is simply a pair of wires of equal length twisted together. The RS-485 specification recommends using twisted pair wires. Using non-twisted wire for minimal cable runs may well give adequate performance, but HID recommends adhering to the twisted pair specification. Twisted pair wiring reduces problems associated with electromagnetic interference. Because the two wires are close together and twisted, any noise or interference received on one wire will also be received on the other. This type of interference is referred to as common mode noise. As RS-485 receivers are designed to look for signals that are the opposite of each other, they can easily reject noise that is common to both wires. As with all communications and data wiring, the characteristic impedance of the twisted pair wiring is a very important consideration for OSDP cables to avoid reflections and power loss with any load or input mismatching. Depending on the cable geometry and the insulation material, twisted pair wires will have a characteristic impedance which is usually specified by the manufacturer. The RS-485 specification recommends but does not specifically dictate that this characteristic impedance be 120 ohms. A termination or end-of-line resistor is simply a resistor placed at the extreme end or ends of a cable. 
The value of the termination resistor should match the characteristic impedance of the cable. The Signo installation guide refers to this best practice. This diagram shows the correct location for termination resistors. Without proper termination, the signal can be distorted by signal voltage reflections from the cable ends. The waveform on the left shows the distortion that can happen when an incorrect value of termination resistor is used. Compare this to the waveform on the right where the termination resistor matches the cable's characteristic impedance. If cable runs are short, termination may not always be required, but this increases the possibility of signal distortion. How many devices can be connected to one RS485 bus? The specification provides for a maximum of 32 drivers or receivers on one line, but realistically this means a maximum of four readers can be handled due to signal delays and voltage drop issues. Can I use existing vegant cable for OSDP? In many cases, yes, but more than likely the existing vegan cable will not meet RS485 twisted pair recommendations. And please tell me, is OSDP half or full duplex? It would be more technically correct to ask is RS485 half or full duplex, and the answer is half duplex. Only one device can transmit over the bus at any given time. CAT 5 or 6 Ethernet cable can be used for OSDP communications, but there are many limitations and several possible issues. There can be problems with longer cable runs or in noisy environments. Shielded Ethernet cable is available, but the impedance is 100 rather than 120 ohms. Solid wire is designed to be crimped, not to be screwed into a terminal block, as it has a tendency to break easily. So, in general, solid wire Ethernet cable is not recommended for OSDP wiring. Access control panels typically use terminal blocks, which is more suited to the use of stranded wire cable, as it is more resilient to stress and abuse. This means it can be used in tight spots such as behind readers and is suitable for being tightened into terminal blocks. Now let's talk about the voltage drop issue. An OSDP reader requires four wired connections to an access control panel, two for power and two for data. Long cable runs may cause a significant voltage drop along power wires due to the cable's resistance. Additionally, voltage drop also depends on the consumption current. That is, the greater the current, the higher the voltage drop. Let's calculate the voltage drop when using a recommended OSDP cable to connect a Signo 20 reader to an access control panel over a distance of 113 meters. The wires are copper and their size is 22 AWG. The Signo 20 reader is UL rated, which means the input voltage can vary between minus 10 to plus 15 percent from the nominal value. Let's specify a voltage of 13.8. The peak current consumption for a Signo 20 reader is 250 milliamps. These input parameters give a voltage drop of 2.99 volts, meaning that the voltage across the reader's input contacts will be 10.81 volts, which is close to the minimum operating voltage. This means that the maximum cable run for connecting a Signo 20 reader to a control panel via OSDP is 113 meters when using a cable of the recommended specification. If several readers are connected to the same RS485 bus, the maximum distance will be shorter. The maximum cable run distance can be increased using CAT6 Ethernet cable. As CAT6 contains four twisted pairs, more than one pair of wires can be used for reader power. When using two pairs, the maximum distance increases to 180 meters, but bear in mind that problems may occur due to incorrect cable characteristic impedance.